Hey y'all, so your girl just celebrated her birthday and this was the beautiful high ponytail updo hairstyle I wore for my 40th cocktail hour party. So I wanted to show you guys how I achieved this beautiful hairstyle so I recorded the whole shebang, okay? Let's get into this 360 glueless wig. All right, so this is the wig I'm going to be using. This wig is from Celia Hair. I will leave the links if you want to get it. It's a 360 wig. I believe it's a 12 or 14 inches, but I will leave the links down below if you want to get this 360 wig. The first thing we're going to do is fully customize this wig to the T. Now I'm using some razor blade. I get blades from my local beauty supply store. Either one of these blades will work for you. I'm going to go in and remove the adjustable um, scribes in the back with the combs that's in the back. Now using a blade, you have to be extremely careful when you use a blade um, to remove your adjustable scribes because a blade is very sharp and your lace is very fragile. So I'm going to take my time and release the thread in the back and remove the entire adjustable scribes. I'm also going to remove all the combs that's in the wig cap. We want a clean, slick when we are trying to customize a 360 wig to our head size. After you remove all your combs and your adjustable scribes in the back, this is how your wig will look, okay? Clean, slick inside. All your combs are removed and your adjustable scribes in the back are removed. You want a clean slate because you have to bleach the knots um, in the back and in the front. So you want this to be customized to the T, which means you want the back and the front to be customized. Next step we're going to do is bleach the knots. For bleaching the knots, I don't usually count measurements. I just pour some bleach in a bowl, okay? And then I just use my 30% developer. I don't use the 20 because I feel it's too slow when processing. And I don't like the 40 because I feel it's too fast when processing. So the 30 is right in between. I just pour the 30 and I stir it until I get a very thick consistency. And then I apply it to the wig. Once I apply the bleach to the front lace and the back lace, this is how it usually looks. I usually let it sit for about 20 to 25 minutes, depending on how well the knots are bleached for me. And then I will take it to my shampoo bowl and wash it out. So after it's been washed, I use the purple conditioner and shampoo. If you want full details on um, fully bleaching your knots, there are tons of video on YouTube. Check it out. But we're going to move on to the next step of customizing this wig after it's fully um, bleached. The next thing I'm going to do after bleaching my knots is apply my elastic band to the wig. This will help make the wig a glueless wig because with the elastic band, you can be able to put the wig on without any glue. So this is the um, elastic band that I use. They're a little bit thicker than most um, bands, but I like this one because I feel like it's firmer and it holds my wig in place. Using my thread and needle, I'm going to sew the um, elastic band inside the wig cap. Now, if you ever wonder how I place my elastic band, if I use a measurement, I really don't really, I really don't use a measurement. I just go by my middle part, wherever I'm going to put my middle part at. I measure about three or four centimeter between both fingers to attach my elastic band. So this is the measurement I do. Whatever I place, I'm going to put my middle part. I just measure it with my finger 
um, three or four inches of both sides and then I attach my elastic band. All right, so after attaching the band um, with my thread and needle, I went ahead and I braided my hair down. And I'm going to just try the wig on, making sure that elastic band is secure and in place. Once I put the wig on, I make sure that the lace is secure and tight fitted around my head. I usually uh, pour the lace, make sure the band is tucked behind my ears and is not sitting on top of my ear because remember the, the band is a little bit bigger. So you want to make sure it's sitting behind your ear, okay? Next, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, measure my ear tabs now. My reason I do this because I'm going to do the rest of the styling on the mannequin head. And I do not want to finish styling and then the wig don't fit my hair. So you want to measure the wig on your hair. Cut off your ear tabs. Make sure your ears are showing outside after you style the wig this part is going to be crucial because if you style the wig with the hair on top of your ear that's how it's going to look when you put the wig on and you don't want that so make sure you cut all the lace around your ear and also in the back Now, from the look of things in the back, it looks okay if you are not lifting up the wig. So, right now, it looks okay. But, to be honest, the wig is a little bit big for my head. It's not going to hold the back of my nip area. So, what I'm going to do is customize it to fit my head. So, you see that part that I'm pinching? That particular part, I have to cut it off in order for the wig to go around my head and be flat and be secure so i want to take out that extra space that's in the back that's why i'm pinching it i'm going to be using a uh, um, paint or you can use a needle just be careful before you poke your head and just um mark that area because you want that little chunk of that part of the wig to come off because if you don't if you go and you can use the adjustable scribes but then it's going to be bunched up once you adjust it and that's my reason why i do not like to use the adjustable scribes so now i'm going to take the wig off and i'm going to cut and adjust um the wig so that it fits my head all right, so after I took the wig off, you can see where I placed the pin. I need to take that whole chunk off. Now, when you go to cut this part off, try your best not to cut the lace because you need the lace to surround your head and fit your head. So you are going to cut the hole, but it's going to be in the back, but you are not going to cut the lace part. You're just going to cut that chunky part that you grab in the back just so the hair can fit your head. Now, that's the best way I can explain this part. It might not make any sense to you. If you can get a wig company to send you your exact head size, then you don't need this big hole in the back of your cap, okay? But listen, I know majorities of the wig company, it's hard to get everybody hair size exactly. So if you want this wig to look like it's coming out of your scalp without the adjustable scribe without you using the adjustable scribe this is what you're going to have to do so once i have the big hole in the back of the cap guess what i have to stitch the wig back together so using my thread and needle you can use your sewing machine and sew this part back 
but I wanted to show you guys without the sewing machine for anyone who doesn't have a sewing machine that this is how you can achieve a custom fit to your own head okay this is how you do it to achieve your custom fit in the back with any wig if you have your other wigs you can measure it put it on put your band on and cut the back and remove that extra space all right so after i stitch the whole back together this is how the wig looks inside this is my exact measurement for my custom head my small head and this is how it looks next now i'm going to put the wig on a mannequin for styling now when you put the wig on a mannequin head you're gonna need a lot of scrape pins okay these are the pins I use. I usually get them from Amazon, but you're going to need a lot of pins because you want to flatten the lace all around from front to back in your nape area. You want to make sure the wig is secure and extremely flat on all areas. So when you go to pour the wig up, it can look as neat, just how you will have a place on your head. So you need to make sure every part of the wig is secure and flat all around. Once you have the wig secure and flat on your mannequin head, it's time for the first step in customizing before styling. We got to plug out this wig. If you're lucky and you get a wig that's already pre-plugged and the hairline looks as natural, then great for you. You do not have to do this step. But you can see this hairline is a bit still bulky. So I'm going to use my tweezers and I'm going to plug out enough of the hair. There are tons of videos showing you how to plug out your wig if you want a detailed tutorial on that but i have to plug out my hair because like i said i want this wig to look natural you don't want to put a ponytail on and it looks so bulky and so wiggy and everybody knows that you know it just look unreal and unnatural so you want to plug out the wig as much as possible and have a natural clean um hairline Now, once after plugging out your hairline, you should have something very nice and natural looking just like this, okay? Try to get your lace to look as thin and natural looking and seamless just like how this lace look. It's not too thin, it's not too bald, and it looks really nice and natural in the front. All right, next we're moving on to the styling. Now, the high ponytail that I want, I want two um, bangs coming on both sides. So I'm going to cut out my bang that I want, okay? So I'm going to section off the side that I want to hang on both left and right side. So I'm using my comb and I'm going to separate um, that section from the rest of the hair. So after sectioning my bang area, this is how the bangs part look. Okay, now I'm just going to um, braid it out of the way just so it doesn't be in the way when I get ready to pull the rest of the hair up. Next, we're gonna separate our baby hair. We're just gonna give ourselves a little side burn and a little bit of baby hair on the side because we have a bang, so the bang's gonna fall over the baby hair anyway. But I'm just adding it just to give a natural look. But the bang gonna fall 
over the baby hair. After pulling out the baby hair, okay, I just made two little sideburns and then I pulled the rest of the hair up. So this is how it looks once the hair is fully separated. This is my foundation to my um, high ponytail. You can see how secure that hairline looks around in the back and I can pull this hair directly up with no budging. Everything is sleek and nice. Now after I pull the hair up, you can determine if you want to twist out the back. For me, like I said, I want this to look as natural as possible. So I'm going to extend the customizing to the back with also tweezing out and plucking out the hairline. So the hairline you saw in the beginning of the video in the back, it did not look like this. You can see like it literally looked like it's pulling out of the mannequin head, okay? This is what you call customizing. So I went in with my tweezers again and I took my time and pluck out the back this is all comes with fully customizing a wig to fit the person's head okay these um hair pins works magic it keeps the hair secure and flat and you can really get in there and tweeze out and plug out so you have a nice natural looking lace pulling from your scalp from the back it all takes time to get done, but trust me, it will all be worth it in the end when you're trying to slay your own wig. Take your time. Do this. I'm telling you, I have changed two times. I took like three days to finish this wig, but guess what? It's my wig. It's not going anywhere. I want it to look just how I want it to look. So, of course, your girl going to take her time. She's going to customize every detail that needs to be customized. So, it looks fully nice and natural when I put it on. After plugging and tweezing it out, look at how the back looks. It looks really nice and natural. It looks like the hair is pulling right out of the mannequin's head, okay? I put the wig on, try it on. After customizing it fully, look at the back. This is what I was going for, that natural look in the back before even styling it. After trying on the wig, I put the wig back on the mannequin. Now it's time for the detailing of the style. Starting off with our high ponytail. Whenever you are making a high ponytail, honey, you need to do your first base by itself. Wherever you want a ponytail to sit, whether it's on top of the head or in the back of the head or on the side of the head, wherever you want that ponytail to sit, make sure you do your first section. Your first section should be exactly to where you want the ponytail to sit. You're going to need a couple of rubber bands for this um, high ponytail because you're going to um, suction off as you go, making many sections until you get the full hair to be fully up in the high ponytail. Now, once you make your first tiny, small ponytail, that's your base, girl. So all the hair is going to pull up to that small, tiny ponytail. So right there and then you start to create little section pulling the hair to the top. So you do it side by side and collect part of the back 
and do it in small round section. You pull all the hair to the first small tiny ponytail and connect that and take more rubber bands and hold that ponytail to the small ponytail. All right, so once I pull the next section up to my ponytail, you can see my ponytail is high up and it's secure. I move on to the next section, which is pulling the back up. I use my even um, adhesive yellow spray. I love the one in the yellow can. I always use it to smooth out the back section. And then I use my blow dryer to have it nice and secure that way all the hair stays in place the whole time i'm doing my ponytail now if you watch the full video from the beginning you will see where that little black mark is in the back of the head okay that black mark is where i cut off and I reattach it, I stitch it back together just to make sure my um, wig cap is customized exactly to the size of my head. That's the first part I did in the middle of the video, in the beginning of the video, okay? And that's the part that's in the middle that looks black. Just in case you was wondering why you have a black mark in the middle part. All right, so after securing that um, section up to the rest of the ponytail, it's time for us to really get in there and smooth out the back section. So we are starting with little small section. We're going to pull everything up and we're going to use the even um, adhesive spray again. We're going to spray it on top every section and we're going to use our comb and really get in there with a small thief small tooth comb and really comb out the little section and pull it up this way you have a nice clean section that is not crumbled up in the back it's secure in the back it looks nice and it looks natural so you want to get in there with your small teeth comb and you want to pull the little hairs, pulling it directly up to the ponytail, making sure nothing is crumbled up, nothing is bent, and make sure your lace is nice and flat. And you want to pull every strand of hair up to the ponytail. So this is how the back section look. You can certainly add some baby hair to the back section if you wanted baby hair to the back section, but I didn't. So I just went in here and pour it up. Next, we're going to move on to the front section. It's the same way we already made our section. We made our part. So the front part should be much easier. All you have to do is pull the hair up. Use the even spray again to smooth every strand out. And then, of course, you go in with your blow dryer again to smooth out the front part. Okay. I use my um, hot comb to just um, smooth out the baby hair, just getting the baby hair out of the way. You can use the hot comb also to um, straighten out the front section to pull the hair up as well. But as I said, I always use the even spray to hold everything up into my high ponytail.
All right, so this is the next day. Um, I did take three days to do this hair. That's why you see me change three times. So this is the next day, and I continue with the other side. Um, just pouring it up the same way I did the back and the right side. Now, this is the left side. I'm just moving the hair out using the even spray again and making sure all the hair strands are in place. And I'm using my blow dryer to hold it in place. I use the last rubber bands to hold the wig in place. And now for the actual ponytail, I use this Brazilian Remy hair I picked up from my local beauty supply store. I believe this is 12 inches or 10 inches. I could be wrong. It's definitely 12 or 10. But this is how the hair looks. It's very bouncy and I love the way it looks after I did the ponytail. Okay, so we're going to move on to adding the extension to the ponytail. Now to add the extension, first we're going to wrap the wig here with the Cenex black strips. We want to put that around the actual wig hair ponytail before we add our extension. All you do with this part is you just take the Cenex strip and you wrap it around the ponytail. And then you want to use a little bit of hair glue to secure the um, Cenex wrap in place. You can also use hairspray, but with the hairspray, you have to blow dry it to secure it. I just always go in with a little bit of hair glue and I put it on the Cenex and I secure it. All right, so... To put the ponytail on, I'm going to add a good amount of hair glue on top of the Cenex wrap. I also apply a little bit to the sides just to make sure the glue is secure on the entire Cenex um, scripts wrap, okay? Then I go in with my tracks. Doubling the tracks, I start at the end of the Cenex, okay? And I start to wrap the hair around the Cenex. You can see I add a little bit of glue at the bottom just to make sure um, the bottom also is secure and it also stays in place. I go ahead and I wrap the entire first bundle around the Cenex strip before I go in with another half of the second pack. So I use one and a half bundle on the top for the ponytail and then the other half bundle, you will see I use it for my bang area. After adding the ponytail, I'm just using my hot comb, my pressing comb, and I'm smoothing out the ponytail before I take the extra hair to wrap around the weft. All right, so for this part, we want to cover up the weft. You do not want the weft showing on top of your ponytail. So you're going to wrap some hair. You're going to take a little bit of small section of hair from the back. You're going to smooth out that small section of hair with your comb. You're going to use some even spray to make it look nice and sleek. Then you're going to add a little bit of hair glue. You want to add the hair glue and the even spray. I use both to secure the wrap in place trust me once you do it it stays in place it looks nice and secure for your ponytail next we're going to go ahead and make our baby hair first i'm going to make the baby hair shorter on both sides then I'm going to go in with my small hot comb, hot 
flat iron and curl the baby hair, okay, after I make them shorter. After um, curling a baby hair, I just use a little bit of spritz. I spray it on the baby hair and then I brush it out to make the curve. And then I use my blow dryer to um, blow dry the baby hair in place. This is how I make the baby hair on both sides. All right, so after making the baby hair, it's time for our bang area. I went ahead and I made my part. I want a middle part. I use my hot comb to screen out the um, hair in the front just to make sure it's nice and straight. Next, we are going to add a little bit of extension to the front because the hair on the front toes don't be as thick as you all know. So if you want that body in the front, you are always going to need to add a little bit of extension in the front. Now for the extension, I'm just adding a little bit of hair glue on the tracks and I went ahead and part my section and I'm just going to stick the extension down on my part this is like doing a quick weave is easy and quick um, also i did about three tracks three tracks on one side which was double and three tracks on the other side which was double so if you really count it instead of three is about six tracks on each side that's how i got my big part to be as full. After adding the bangs, next what I did was I cut off my ends. I always cut off my ends to take the regular ends off my weave. This is a habit for me. It just makes your curls bouncy. It makes your curls full and it helps your curl stays in place. So I went, I chopped off the ends in a little bit of layer form. I did it to the actual high ponytail, and then I went in here and I moved on to the front part, and I chipped off the front part a little bit and adding some layers also, which gave me a little bit of volume and shape to my front and my face. All right, so today is day three of me doing this hair, and today is the actual day my son graduated high school. Yesterday was his 18th birthday. Today was the graduation, and tomorrow is my 40th. So this is the reason why I decided to wear this hairstyle. <laughs> And now for the curling part, okay? I use my flat iron, my blue flat iron, my holy grail. I use a little bit of hairspray first. I straighten out the hair. And then I use the same flat iron after I straighten it out. I use the flat iron to curl it. 
I use my butterfly clips to hold the hair in place. I always hold my curls in place because I will like my curls to cool off before I take them down. That has been my staple always when it comes to my curls looking luxurious and my curls lasting longer. So after curling the back ponytail, it was time for the front. Like you saw, I just curl all the curls away from my face, okay? So all the curls are facing backwards. Um, this is just a high ponytail. I wasn't really going for the curls to stay. I just wanted a high, short, cute ponytail with a little bit of curls, okay? But if you want to... Um, define updo with curls you can achieve this hair same hairstyle if that's the type of look if you're going for a high bun you are trying to achieve so this is how my beautiful wig looks after I was completely done with it okay it was time for me to cut the lace and try it on all right, y'all, so this is how beautiful my wig looks on a mannequin. I was super excited for this wig, okay? After I took the wig off the mannequin, I realized I should have used, like, a plastic for my mannequin because I had glue on a mannequin. But besides that, this hairstyle turned out so beautiful. Look at how flawless this wig look. Let's put her on. And after I put her on, you couldn't tell me nothing. Look at how beautiful she looks. She looks flawless, okay? I was just trying her on. I didn't even put any foundation on her yet. And you can see that lace already looks flush on my skin. My baby hair was so nice. You can see nothing under the lace, pure glueless, and it's snug to my head. Look at the back. The hair looks like it's pulling directly out of my neck, period, okay? And this is the goal I was going for. All right, y'all. So there you have it. Who says you can do a glueless updo salon quality who said you have to pay an arm and a leg in the um, beauty salon to get this gorgeous hairstyle who said you can take your time and achieve this beautiful glue less wig by yourself for yourself at your own home in your own home you can get a flawless look whether it's for your birthday for a wedding, for a special occasion, for your baby shower. You don't have to go and pay so much money in the salon. You can achieve this beautiful hairstyle by yourself, for yourself, in the comfort of your own home. This is pretty much the end. This is how I look for my fabulous 40th cocktail hour. This is all my friends and family gathered around me. And it was time for me to go party. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.